Hey guys, welcome back to Rebound. We are reading aloud page 306 to 329. She pulls out a scrapbook of family pictures of people who look familiar, but I have no memory of. Percival Bell, age 22, also known as Percy. This is your grandfather. When I first met him, he was sharp as a tack, cool as a summer breeze, serious as thunder in his light blue polo and matching pants with a black belt and Air Force boots. I was at the train station with my parents waiting for my grandparents to arrive when he got off the train and this girl I knew from school come running up to him, kissing on him so fast she almost knocked me over. I saw him staring at me and I turned away quick because I didn't want him to know I had been staring too. But he knew, I think he knew, because he found out where I went to church, which was pretty easy because it was only two churches, the Baptist and the Methodist. He showed up that Sunday, tried to talk with me, and I ignored him because he had a girlfriend. Yes, because he had a girlfriend. Tell him what happened next, Alice. Tell him, Granddaddy says, walking in the front door. They were always fussing, and she fussed a lot. Get it straight, Alice, and the next thing I know, they broke up. Who is the other guy in the picture, Grandma? In the uniform, walking behind Granddaddy? Jordan Bell, age 23. Your grandfather's brother was a jokester, liked to laugh a lot and yap a lot, especially on the football field and to the girls at church. Your grandfather was sweet as apple, straight as the pleats on his pants, like a gentleman should be. But your Uncle Jordan, he was a bona fide mess, always the loud one, the life of the party. They were both on leave for three weeks, and by the time they left, Jordan Bell knew everybody's name, and they all knew his. God rest his soul. The girl that was kissing on Percy at the train station, her name was Ruth, never spoke to either of us again. And I fell. Oh, I fell so deep in love with him. It's like I was drowning in pure joy. Now that's deep, Charlie, she says, laughing and turning the page. Joshua Bell, age 37. That's your father playing catch with you in the front yard. He was a handsome as an Hollywood actor just like you. You want a son like him, Charlie? That's what you want. Just a joy to... Now, why are you lying to that boy, Alice? Granddaddy interrupts. Tell him the truth. Family history. Don't say that, Percy. Joshua is a good boy. He was a cut up, a knucklehead, going nowhere fast. No plan, no purpose. If it weren't for the Air Force, he wouldn't have been able to stay out of trouble. I seem to remember you were a bit of a cut up back in the day too, Percy. <clears throat> we're not talking about me right now. Alice, Charlie, your father was a good man. It just took him a little longer to find his way. The war straightened him out, though. He told him he didn't like it. He may not have liked it, but it made a man out of him. The war didn't make him who he was, Charlie. Your mama did that. I agree with her. Josh didn't stand a chance when he met her. She just looked at him and he melted like butter. Heck, me too. Oh, they were so cute. Yeah, real cute, Alice. Now, how about we stop all that reminiscing? We can all use some good remembering from one time to another, right, Percy? I guess you're right, Alice. I guess you're right, Granddaddy says, kissing her on the cheek, then rubbing my bushy head. But after we get finished with the memories, Chuck, got to get to work. Work? The grass. But, Granddaddy, it's almost too dark to see. Well, you better get to cutting before you can't see. Phone message. Hey, Mom. It's me, Charlie. I was just cutting the grass at night. I can't wait to see you at the cookout on Saturday. And can you bring me my skates, please? And some of my, uh, my records? Because Granddaddy plays jazz nonstop in the house, in the car. And it's annoying. And I can't get this one song out of my head. And I want some new sneakers. Air Jordans, please. And do you mind if I leave the reunion early and go shoot a little hoop just for a few hours because I'm trying to get better, please? And I love you. Call me back. Bye. When Granddaddy hollers, Chuck, 
The phone's for you and hurry up because I'm expecting a call from the hardware store about a piece I need for this shed. I start getting up the courage to beg mom for the sneakers I really, really, really want, only it's not my mom. Phone call with CJ. Hello? Charlie, is that you? Yeah. Who is this? It's, is Chuck your name now? Huh? You know, you're AKA. Oh, I guess my granddad calls me that. I kind of dig it. CJ, what are you doing on the phone? Let's not waste time with rhetorical question. What's up, Charlie? I mean, Chuck. Nothing, I guess. Well, how's the big city? Hot. How hot is it, Chuck? It's so hot, I saw a chicken lay an omelet. Oh, you're so funny, Charlie. No, I'm serious. I'm burning up, and they never turn on the AC in this house. According to the news, it's going to be the hottest summer in almost 100 years. I'm going to beg my grandmother to turn on the air. Good luck, Chuck. So what kinds of things are you doing up there? Okay, I took the train and I saw the White House from a distance. I saw where they make money and Skinny's here and I'm on a basketball team. What, 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 wait a minute. First you change your name without telling me and now you're playing basketball? The world is upside down. I saw the Globetrotters play and I won a basketball. Very cool. And I'm playing in a big three-on-three tournament. I thought you didn't like basketball. I didn't used to like it that much. Well, that sounds splendid to me. It's good to hear you smile. How's old lady Wilson doing? Oh, she's got a cane now to get around and she's still burning cookies. Ha <laughs> ha, what about Harriet? You still walk her? Sure am, but I think her other eye is getting worse. Yesterday, she wouldn't fetch the frisbee. Oh, did you get my letter? Yeah. Did you get the surprise? What surprise? Come on, Charlie, stop playing around. No, I don't know what you're talking about. How many letters did you get from me? The one. Oh, you didn't get a package? No. Well, I guess it's still in transit. The post office is so slow. What is it? It's a surprise. What kind of surprise? It's a surprise, silly. I can't tell you. Oh, I kind of like it. The surprise? No, your new name. Well, I got to go. We're going camping for the 4th, and I got to go pack. And then when we get back, I got to go to the inventor's camp. Cool. Well, it sounds like you're finding your joy again. Good luck to you. Good luck for what? The big tournament. Score a point for me. Okay, thanks. Smooches. Smooches. Bye, Chuck Bell. When I was little, Mom would read me a book each night, then tuck me in and kiss both my cheeks and my forehead. My dad would be at work, and so he'd call from his night job and say, Sleep tight, don't let the bite bugs bite. And the mom would say, Good night, honey, smooches. And dad would blow a kiss through the phone, and all was good in our world. Tonight I whisper, smooches, to myself, and almost hear a kiss in the air. Or maybe it's the fan. But either way, I feel a little more normal, like maybe he's still here, but not in a ghost kind of way. More like it, as long as I remember him, he's still right here in my heart kind of way. The big game. The gym is packed with like a 100 people. The air is filled with the smell of hot dogs and popcorn coming from the cafeteria where we all just ate lunch. I lace up my sneakers double nodding them so I don't trip. Roxy comes up to me and I'm thinking she wants to thank me for playing on her team, but what she says with a real stern look is, don't screw up, Chuck. Chuck, please, don't you screw up. Wink brings the ball up the court like he's Carl Lewis running the 100. When he gets to the half court line, he passes the ball to me so hard my chest almost caves in. I pass the ball back then, run to set a pick just like Roxy showed me, which lets Wink take off like a jet plane all the way to the hoop from a left-handed layup. Yeah. Playing by twos. We're up 18 to 16 with the ball and under two minutes left. The guy checking me is talking trash like I'm a garbage collector. Why are you dribbling so much? Why are your lips dribbling so much? What you gonna do with that rock, chump? He says, winking at me. So I show him what I'm going to do with that rock. When I dribble two by right and he follows, then I cross like I practiced a million of times and it works. It worked! And he tries to follow, but he slips, slides, and almost collides with the hardware 
wood while I go right past him to the hoop for layup. And just to make sure he knows my name, I go to slap that backboard and miss. But he's not paying attention. Shh. Because, yeah, he's still on the ground. Who's the chump now, I say. Roxy comes over and high fives me. 20 to 16. But wait. The ref blows the whistle. On me? Unsportsmanlike conduct? They get two free throws and miss one. 20 to 17. And that's where we're going to stop today at page 328.